All right, so in this video, I'm gonna show you my personal default EV settings. Depending on who you are and what kind of artist you, you are and what kind of work you do, they might be a little bit different, but I want this video to kind of show you where things are located and what's best for my workflow. And it's a pretty broad workflow, so it's not very, very niche and specific. So let's get into it. And so here we go. You can't really see much. You can see the very glowy, rocky material I made. So let's go ahead, and if you don't know where to access the EV settings, if you have EV, EV selected here, you'll see the little camera icon, select that. And if you stay in the camera icon, these are most of your EV settings. So let's go, let's click ambient occlusion. You can't see an obvious change, but in different scenes that have a lot of light or things like that, you will see a definite change in your ambient occlusion. And right in here, you can change the settings, but I have found that if I leave them at the default, they look just fine. Um, very important when it seems similar to the one we're looking at, bloom. Now it looks really pretty. So just like this, just a heads up. If you were to render this with a transparent background, you wouldn't get a lot of the bloom. It would cut it out. So you would have to go and do that in your compositing. But the great thing about bloom, if you're not doing that is you have your glare right here in your viewport. All right, the next thing is the depth of field. So the way to access depth of field is you click your camera, you go click on the camera icon here, depth of field, and then now you can play with f-stop, focus distance, things like that. So I'm just gonna bring it down, looks nice. Uh, we're gonna keep depth of field off, but that's how you use the depth of field. So you would click that right there all right, next thing we have is subsurface scattering. If you're using subsurface materials like leaves or skin, you would use this here. Again, um, again, a lot of the default settings that Blender comes with are really, really good. I haven't seen any need to really change them a lot. Uh, specifically with this one, I have never needed to change it, so keep it there. But depending on your scene, if you do some different things, you will want to change that as you're working. All right, screen space reflections, one of the most important ones. Now we get our nice floor. There's one thing I always like to change, which is this trace precision. I put it at one. I keep refraction on, make sure that stays on. I always take off half res trace. It tends to put noise in my scene, but sometimes it might reduce the size of your renders. All right, for sampling, I keep it at 64. At the max, I'll put it at 100, but honestly, I've only had to do that once, But and I've made hundreds of EV renders so far since they released the beta at 64 is the magic number that comes default. So I never need to change that. I see some people putting it like 2000. Sampling is very different in EV than it is in cycles. So keep it at the default. You're not gonna wanna touch that. All right, motion blur. Let's turn that off really quick. You can kind of see a subtle difference. If you turn it on, you can see right up here on the edges, it's really, really cool. My scene is kind of slow, but you can see the motion blur working. It's really cool. It can look kind of cheesy sometimes. The, the real time motion blur isn't quite as nice as as motion blur and other programs or even cycles, but motion blur here, it looks really great and will improve some of your scenes when trying to achieve a little bit of realism. In terms of motion blur settings, I would leave it there, samples at eight, shutter at one, just keeps it real. Uh, Blender did a really good job at these default settings with a lot of the testing they did, so it leaves a lot of the work to them and you just turn everything on and it looks really great. All right, now let's check out volume metrics real quick. I just made a simple volume box to show you what happens with these volume tabs. So start and end, I wouldn't touch that, but the tile size is very important. Let's bring it down to 16. As you can see, it almost looks like a pixelated image. So, and this really puts, this really taxes your computer. So at 2px, which is the highest quality, it really gives you high quality volume metrics. But if you're just trying to design your scene, play around with the scene, keep it at 16, or if it's really bad, maybe at eight, to so just get a good idea of what the volume is doing. And then when you're done with the render, put it at four or two, depending on your computer, two might crash it. But four and two are kind of the magic number to keep it at the high quality. Volumetric lighting, keep that on. And also volumetric shadows, it's very important. Keep your volumetric shadows on. All right, so shadows, very important. I would keep the cube size at 512 keep the cascade size at 1024 hide bit depth very important and soft shadows if you have hard shadows they it won't be a soft shadow it'd be kind of like paper cuts it would look really terrible just sort of it almost looks like pieces of paper on the ground that kind of glitch out so soft shadows always really important they look great unless you're trying to do something that requires hard shadows and you can, of course take that off but soft shadows keep that on at all times Indirect lighting this is something you would do if you have if you're using HDRI or lighting like that you would you would use the light probes. So 
I would do some research on these. They're really, really cool and fun, and they help your scenes look realistic when using indirect lighting. So, And that would be a whole other video on itself. But light, again, everything looks great here in terms of default settings. These two buttons you'll be using a lot when using those light probes and reflection maps. So using those two things, keep in mind, this is where they're located. All right, that's most of the settings. One last thing I want to show you, which is kind of hidden, which is glass. A lot of people have trouble with glass and EV, and EV is not the best engine if you're rendering a lot of glass. But let's just say we bring the roughness all the way down here, and we bring the transmission all the way up. Still, you can't see anything. It's just a reflective object. What you have to do is come down here and click screen space refraction, and now you have your object that is see-through. Again, still not the best glass, it's Eevee, but it's the best you can work with. And if you're using this as a game engine or something like that, then of course it looks great. So there you go. Those are all my default EV settings. Depending on the artist, depending on what you do, your EV settings might be different. These are just mine. So there you go. Thanks for watching.